Welcome to the flock. Let's dive into this brief lesson and lab where we'll get to see CO2 solid in liquid form. A rare phenomenon indeed. Solid CO2, i.e. dry ice, is really unique in that it goes directly from a solid to a gas at negative 78 degrees Celsius. This is called the sublimation point. The reason we call it sublimation is because it skips the liquid phase. Normally, a chemical likes to go from a solid to a liquid to a gas. Like take water, for instance. Water, when it's a solid, i.e. ice, is going to melt at zero degrees Celsius. Anything below that, it's a solid. And we call that the melting point because that's where it turns into a liquid. So going from a solid to a liquid, and then from a liquid to a gas at 100 degrees Celsius where water boils, and it's also called the boiling point, I know, we're pretty inventive with our names here in chemistry, has all three phases in the case of water. We see solid, liquid, and gas. But now again, back to the CO2. It completely skips the liquid phase, and that's why we call it sublimation. So when we see a chemical go directly from a solid to a gas, we call that sublimation. Let's review the phase diagram for carbon dioxide before we waddle into the lab so we can understand the pressure required to turn carbon dioxide from a solid to a liquid. Recall here that ATM stands for pressure. Notice that pressure is indeed on the y-axis and temperature is on the x-axis. For reference, keep in mind that room temperature, the temperature at which this lab will take place, is around 23 degrees Celsius, right here, roughly. When we're looking at a phase diagram, we can say that any temperature that falls within this region and any pressure that falls within this region would make CO2 a gas, which makes sense. Notice how the gas form of CO2 takes up the majority of this phase diagram because it kind of wants to be a gas all the time. And there's only this little tiny small window of temperature that we have access to and pressure that we have access to that would make CO2 a liquid. That's what we're aiming to do in the lab. What's this whole triple point thing here in the middle? Well, that triple point happens to be the exact temperature and pressure 5.1 ATMs and negative 56.7 degrees Celsius, that would make carbon dioxide a solid, liquid, and gas all at the same time. So let me give you an example of how to read this. At negative 90 degrees Celsius, somewhere around here, and at one ATM pressure, what would the state be? Well, looks like we would be within this solid region, so we would say that CO2 would be a solid. Now that you've seen me try it, Go ahead and see if you can determine a pressure and temperature that would make CO2 turn into a liquid. Pause the video now. There could have been many correct answers for which pressure and which temperature would turn CO2 into a liquid, but you would at least need a temperature of negative 56.7 degrees Celsius and at most a temperature of 31 degrees Celsius and pressure wise you would at least need 5.1 ATMs of pressure, and you could have equal to or greater than 72.9 ATMs of pressure as well. And then we got to witness liquid CO2 in the lab simply by manipulating this pressure range in order to maintain it a liquid at room temperature, which again was around 23 degrees Celsius. Now that we have an idea of how much pressure would be required to turn CO2 from a solid into a liquid instead of sublimating directly from a solid to a gas, let's check it out in the lab. Let's gear up for lab to see the solid CO2 dry ice turn into a liquid. Let's do this. Get a bunch of your plastic droppers and snip the tips. I know all the gentlemen watching this just clutched their crotch. Sorry, not sorry. All you need is some tweezers and some dry ice, and we're gonna put little pieces of it inside our little droppers with the snip tips. Now the objective here is to turn this solid CO2 into a liquid. Normally, remember, it wants to be a gas. It wants to go directly from a solid to a gas. So the way we're going to do this is by manipulating the pressure. We have our solid CO2 in the plastic dropper. We're just gonna bend over the top twice so that we can hopefully keep all of the gases of CO2 inside and thereby also cause the pressure to rise. 
as we increase the pressure, we are hoping to see the solid CO2 turn into a liquid. And even if only for a moment, that pressure will continue to rise as it's a liquid and the pipette or the dropper will inevitably burst and all of that pressure will be released as the gas escapes and cause the solid CO2 to magically reappear instantaneously. Ta-da! And just like that, it went from a solid to a liquid back to a solid using just pressure. In this lesson and lab, we learned that carbon dioxide typically goes from a solid to a gas at negative 78 degrees Celsius via sublimation. That's what it means when a chemical goes directly from a solid to a gas and skips the liquid phase in between. Now remember, water does not do that. Water goes from a solid to a liquid via its melting point at zero degrees Celsius and from a liquid to a gas via its boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius. We then reviewed how to read a phase diagram particularly the one for carbon dioxide, to determine the massive amounts of pressure that would be required to turn solid carbon dioxide into a liquid instead of it sublimating to a gas. And then we got to see liquid carbon dioxide in the lab. If you try this lab at home, please make sure that you wear eye protection and you don't touch the dry ice with your bare hands. Please give this video a quacks up and subscribe to Decanta for some more free educational content. Wishing you a day filled with minimal pressures of life. Till next time. No ducks, no glory. Pressure, pushing down on me, pushing down on you. Pressure, pushing down on the sea of two in the old dropper, yeah. Turning the up, solid to a liquid. Under pressure, yeah, we're gonna see it. Sublimation, phase changes. The solid to a liquid.